my name is Evis Panula and I'm going to talk to you about state, state management with Apollo Client or things I've learned while working with Apollo Client. There's a um, sta state um, st uh, solution. Sorry, I'm pretty nervous. So maybe I just need to take a few breaths before continuing. <sighs> All right. So, <laughs> thanks. A uh, few words about myself. So, as I said, my name is Evis and I go with pronouns she and her. Uh, I'm a software developer. I've been doing full stack things basically, but uh, lately I've been concentrating more on front end and things I'm really uh, excited about are, well, React of course, um, TypeScript, GraphQL, and CSS actually, I've been like, that's really been a thing really recently and, and like all the advanced concepts you can find there and it's fun. Um, yeah, all right. So why this topic? Why am I talking here? Uh, we had a project where we also had a clean slate and could choose the technologies and um, we went with, well, React, of course, and then um, being two GraphQL enthusiasts on the team, well, of course, we took GraphQL there. And then we had to think about the, I'm sorry, just, yeah. We had to think about uh, state management solutions. And well, Redux was the first thing we were thinking about. And we started uh, Googling and doing some research. Um, we had also decided that, okay, Apollo client is gonna be the GraphQL client solution for the app. And um, after some research realized that, okay, there might be some problems with Redux and Apollo client or GraphQL, I don't actually remember which one, but also the research uh, showed that, okay, Apollo client's cache might be just enough for us. So we don't actually need Redux for that for the app. Um, and this talk is actually things I wish I'd known when we started with with the well this solution because at the time documentation of uh, Apollo clients um, cache or or how to use it for the client state management it wasn't that good. It's still like it's better now. But there are some things that I wish would be better. Maybe I'm gonna do something about it later. But yeah, um, yeah. Um, I did a little demo app for the um, for this um, presentation, and it's made with well React. Uh, it has Apollo client. And it has an API, um, external API, which it's using. And about the API, um, I don't know if many of you can relate, but I've been waiting for my Hogwarts letter since I was like 11. I'm still waiting for it. And the reason why I'm doing all this coding stuff is uh, because it's like basically the closest thing to magic, actually. And that's why I chose the Potter API for for, for the demo. And um, I'm gonna talk about that a little more later, what it's doing and everything. Um, before going to Apple client and, and the cache and all these things, I have to ask how many of you are somewhat familiar with the GraphQL concepts, query, mutations, subscriptions or resolvers, type devs or schema. Okay, not all of you. So maybe let's take a little look at them or a little um, quick uh, introduction. So first of all, there are like, if you compare uh, GraphQL to REST, there are like REST, when you want to get something from REST, you are using the get verb there. And uh, when you want to post something to there, you're using the post and so on. Uh, with GraphQL, basically, when you want to get something, you are querying it. 
And when you want to do basically everything else, you are mut using the mutation. And then there are subscriptions. Uh, that's basically WebSockets and actually using WebSockets under the hood. But like you can subscribe to some events. For example, uh, think about Facebook and likes there. Um, when somebody else likes about the post, you can see that they liked and uh, that's subscribed to that like event. Um, then there's schema, or in Apollo um, Apollo's case, it's usually type devs, and there you are. You can define the um, entities you can query or or interact with in the, for example, in the um, API. So here, for example, is a type which, uh, which has these um, values su such as name, house, want, patronus, age, and um, their uh, types. So name's going to be a string and so on. Then there are resolvers. There you basically uh, define how, how you, for example, get that uh, certain which from the, like when you are using it on the back end from the database, for example. So the, the uh, function find here has to be implemented, of course, and so to, that you can find that which with the um, ID, which is um, given in the, in the arguments. All right, so here was a really short introduction to GraphQL, and I hope it helps to understand this um, rest of the talk better for those who didn't know anything about GraphQL. So, sorry. <coughs> uh, there are ways to store, uh, a few ways to store, and also a few ways to interact with the state when using um, Apollo Client or the cache of Apollo Client. First of all, when you are storing data, you have two options. You can either use uh, virtual fields or have um, data that's completely local or, or in the front end, so it has nothing to do with the back end. And virtual fields, they have something to do with the back end. They are fields that you can add to um, data that's coming from the back end. For example, if you have an e-commerce site where you get the product with its name and um, price and description, uh, in the front end you might need a um, something that determines if that certain product is in customer's cart. Well, you can add a virtual field of is in cart, and, and that's used only in the front end. And a um, good example of the uh, completely local data is um, state of the model, if it's visible or not. You can st store the, that info to, to the um, state. Then there are f uh, two ways to interact with the state, or with the cache, actually. So you can either use cache, Apple Client's cache's uh, direct methods, such as write fragment, read fragment, or write query, uh, read query, or write data. And also you can use local resolvers. So resolvers that only work in the front end and, and interact with the data only in the front end. And actually this, these local resol sorry, local resolvers, they use uh, these direct me methods Cache direct methods under the hood. So they just uh, kind of wrap all the functionality. And when you use local resolvers, you can um, use them and, uh, and like query data and uh, mutate that local data the same way that you would do in, like in the app, the same way you would do with the backend data. I'm going to show some e examples later. Yeah, all right. So, um, an example about virtual fields. And before going into that, uh, about the app, actually, I'm going to show a little demo about uh, of it on the next slide, but before that, uh, what it is about. You know, 
um, it's 2020. Hogwarts is already using apps and, and technology, of course. And um, their spells teacher needed a app for for um, uh, for choosing the spells they need their um, students to learn for their all exams. So that's basically the the app is about that. And the Potter API it provides list of spells uh, with their name and description and type. But we need a virtual field of is selected in this app so that we can determine which spells are selected. And then could, we could do something with, with these spells. And um, here's a little demo about that. So the, the spells that have um, grape background are selected and those with white are not. So, how do we do that? Let's look into some code. So, to query the dat data and, and to just get the data, um, we need to first extend that uh, spell type and add this is selected field here. And it's boolean, because it's just true or false. Then we have to define spell resolver. And here, um, we define how this is selected field resolves. And here you can see on line uh, nine that uh, it checks if the is, uh, spell is selected is undefined because when you get the data from the API, it's like there is actually no is selected field. So when the first time the data comes in and uh, it has to be initialized to false. And then after that, it's gonna be just true or false, if, if, like, if it's uh, changed to true, it's gonna be true, and, and if it's not, then false. So just the value of spell is selected. Then we need to pass the uh, spell resolver to the resolver local resolver object, which uh, with the type defs uh, would be um, given to Apollo client's initialization. And then uh, to query that uh, field in the app, it's uh, with client directive, which is shown here on the line seven. So at client here, so that Apollo client knows that, okay, this is selected field, it's not coming from the API, but it's, um, it's um, just client side thing. So it doesn't try to get it from the API because, well, there would be some errors. Trust me, I've tried this without the client directive. Yeah, okay, so now we get the, the um, value. How do we change it or mutate it? Okay, here's lots of code. We're gonna go through it piece by piece, but we use mutation. And first we need to get the um, ID in the cache with uh, contexts um, get cache key uh, method. So here the ID of the um, said spell is passed as an argument and and this get ca cache key uses it to fetch the right, uh, well, later to fetch the right spell. Uh, then we have to define the fragment. So we are, we want that uh, is selected um, only from that, from from the spell. And here you can see on line 10 that it uses the client directive. Then we actually read the fragment from cache with, with the defined fragment and the ID. And then we need to first uh, toggle the value. So if it was false, then it's gonna be through and vice versa here on, on line 14. And on line 15, we are writing it, it back to cache with the updated data. And then this needs also to be passed to um, resolvers, local resolvers object. And then uh, using it in the um, app is just as simple that as it would be with, um, with the 
um, mutation in the back end. And here again, on line two, note the client directive. Okay, then completely local data. Well, the app, like the, the teacher, they're using it and it's like their eyes get tired and they want a dark uh, theme for the app. So, of course, that state needs to be stored somewhere. And we're going to store it to, to the, um, well, cache, of our client's cache. Um, here's a little demo of it. So when the slider is toggled, the theme changes. And I, as I said, I like CSS, and this is uh, like, I might have spent like 60% of the time um, when I was making the app to this little thing here to get it right. And, and the other time for the, all the other things, but yeah, I told you I like CSS. But yeah, um, to have completely uh, local data, we need to initialize the um, mode or the theme. And this happens uh, where the Apple client is initialized and the cache is initialized. So we need to write the um, initial state there and I chose that's gonna uh, the, the initial um, mode of the app or theme of the app is gonna be light then to um, to be able to query the that um, value we need to first add type theme which has mode string and then extend type query there with that theme so the same thing, basically, we uh, did uh, when we were adding the virtual field, extending. Then it was spelled, now it's query. And then to get the um, value here again, client directive on line two, we just used a query. And because it was initialized a um, few lights, uh, slides ago, we don't need to actually um, write any resolvers for that because it's already written there and, and it's pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, then we need to change it. And again, let's go through it piece by piece. So first first of all, we need to query the, the current state. So we need a query for that. And it's basically the same one we saw, saw a few slides ago. Here again, the client directive. Then we are actually querying the um, previous or we could say current state of the um, well theme there with caches read query method and then um, change the mode. If it was light, it's going to be dark and vice versa. And then finally writing the query back to, to cache. So using the same query, but uh, new data or updated data here. And then to use it on the app, um, it's here again, uh, client directive on line two. All right. So what I want you to remember from this besides that awesome CSS thing, um, use local resolvers. They wrap uh, the, this, the kind of the comp complexity and, and the, um, this, uh, wrapping, wrapping these direct methods, you can um, reuse them and also combine um, like uh, queries or mutations in the like when you are using the back end data you can use also the front end data or query or um, in the same queries and like it's more kind of like you don't have to think in multiple ways kind of like okay when i get something from the back end i'm using these uh, queries but when i need to mutate something in the um front end or the, the cache, so that the state, 
I'm using something completely else, but you can use basically the same thing. There are some use cases when you are using directly these um, direct methods, such as initializing the, the uh, status was in, in the uh, theme case, but basically, like, if you remember, use local resolvers, that's good. And if you want to read more about these things, Apollo client has, well, they have a documentation. There's lots of things about this. They have, like, in their um, documentation, there is stuff about that. And they also have a tutorial where they go through this, um, how to use that Apollo client's cache for the client state management. All right, so thank you. That was it. I'm not going to do any public Q&A, but I'm going to be here on the break after the talks. So if you want to ask something from me, just come talk to me, please. Okay, thank you.